You know why I don't like vampires? Because if they don't have reflections, they should be invisible. Because that's how light works. If a vampire does not have a reflection, that means that no emitted visible light is coming from the vampire's body, being reflected off the mirror. The mirror is doing nothing special to the light coming off of the vampire, and it should hit your eyes, and you should see that vamp. But nay, instead, you see nothing. That could be possible, say, if a vampire was instead putting out only infrared radiation or something that your eyes couldn't necessarily pick up. Like, you can't just see a glob of slightly hotter air in a mirror, and if a vampire was that, or slightly cooler air because, you know, they're dead and all, then you wouldn't be able to see it. But if they have a visible form you can see with visible light, then with a reflection you should be able to see it, and that's why I don't like vampires. <sighs> I don't like them. Someone tell Bram Stoker, I'm coming for you. Welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections, and I reflect upon them with a nerdy mirror that is me. And then I tell you what's coming up next on this channel. Hint, it's another video about using nuclear weapons in a way that a rogue billionaire who loves memes wants to use them in way. Oh, and uh, maybe you happen to notice my lovely new Because Science hoodie? Oh, this and many more back to school products you can now get at the Nerdist store. And oh, it's so soft. It's got a great skin feel. And you know that's what I'm all about. But getting right into it, in the last episode of Because Science, we are trying to turn Jupa Jupe, or Jupiter if you want to be technical about it, into a star using a black hole. Whole. We were going through this whole process and using all the numbers that I got from a 1989 paper by Dr. Martin Fogg. Fogg suggests using a microscopic black hole and orbiting it to the center of Jupiter. If you do that, an accretion disk might form such that it will turn the entire gaseous planet into a dim red star. It's fascinating and interesting, and we went through all of it, and if you want to see the whole video, you can click through in the pinned comments below. But what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from William Winder who says, I've got a black hole where my heart should be. Does that make me a star? <laughs> what is this, Tumblr? No, that would make you dead. I don't pull punches here, I just pull screenshots. Woo! Gus January and Big Lou 20 and Alexandre Salou and an ancient Sobek all say, wow, now Kyle wants to burn entire planets down. He's really evolving into an evil mastermind. He's getting out of control. He wants to vaporize Ju Jupiter just to read at night. Someone needs to stop this lunatic, you supervillain. Why do you want to destroy our beautiful Jupe Jupe? I am sick of this. It's getting kind of ridiculous. I haven't done one thing in the last number of weeks that could possibly suggest me being any sort of supervillain or supervillain type. Now, why would you even... <sighs> Orbital strike. Billing. <sighs> Representative. Yo, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, thank you. I've been waiting for like 35 minutes. Yeah, what's your name? January? All right, I'll write that down, just in case I need it. What's your extension? Cool, thing. anyway, yeah, there's a lot of inquisitive minds out there on the internet, and I, uh, I need them all taken care of. No, I hit my deductible already. Yeah, like four asteroids ago. What? Uh, do I have to get the referral through my primary, or is the... No, 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 I, no, I'll, I'll do it myself. No, thank you. You've been very, very helpful. Just uh, be careful next time you go in a pool. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just subscribing to some Chris Hadfield Masterclass videos? B-Man69, nice. Eleven says, so only heat can escape a black hole's gravity? The reason why we were using a black hole in this episode is because as matter twirls down towards doom, that matter can release a lot of its energy bound up within its mass as heat, as it smashes up against itself in this accretion disk. I am not suggesting, though, that heat can escape the gravitational influence of a black hole. In fact, I did not even say that in the episode. What is important to understand here is that past the event horizon, the so-called event horizon, is where no radiation can escape 
escape from. So traditionally depicted, it's the edge of the black sphere, even though it's not really a thing. That's the point at which the escape velocity from a black hole becomes the speed of light. And so not even light or other forms of light like infrared radiation, heat can escape from it. But outside of a black hole, around it in that accretion disk, heat can be generated and emitted into surrounding space. Our next comment comes from Diogo, who says, is possible to humankind create a black hole that can be held by human hand? Right. In the episode, we are using a microscopic black hole, but I want everyone to remember that just because a black hole is very small, doesn't mean that it's not very, very massive. For example, if you wanted something like a black hole that you could hold in your hand, I'm gonna guess it's about a hand-sized thing. Take this muggy mug here. Now, if a black hole was literally this size, and you can do the math, it would weigh uh, three times more than the entire planet that you're standing slash sitting slash laying down slash whatever you're doing on right now. A black hole mug would weigh three times more than the entire planet Earth. So no, Diogo, you cannot hold a black hole in your hand because not only will it be too heavy, it will kill you. But I mean, isn't just being on the internet feeling like you're being ripped apart piece by piece anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to two-time super nerd already, Ryuman90, who says, hmm, how can we harness all the energy from Jupiter? I have an idea. Maybe we would create a Dyson sphere around Jupiter after it becomes a star to harness all that energy effectively. So if you're not aware, a Dyson sphere is this concept thought up by legendary physicist Freeman Dyson, and he thought of a megastructure, a giant shell that you could put around an entire star, and it's kind of on the inside like a bunch of solar panels, kind of, that would harness the maximum amount of a sun's energy. And this is what Ryuman 90 is suggesting for our newly stellified Jupiter. And the interesting thing is, Ryuman, this is exactly what was suggested in the paper by Martin Fogg in the original paper in 1989. He says that after you stellify Jupiter, as it's getting brighter and brighter, there's a point at which you can start terraforming the Galilean moons, but beyond that, before you have to disassemble Jupiter, he actually suggests putting a Dyson sphere around it to harness the energy. So, Ryuman, for coming up with an answer for stellification that the actual scientists actually did, you are definitely a super nerd. Three times! Ow. But of course, I'm not always right, except I am right about the vampire thing. So what did I get wrong last week? Well, by far the biggest correction on this video comes from a number of you who all say the very same thing. You are all aware of so-called Hawking radiation, and because of Hawking radiation, which is the depletion of matter from a black hole over time, wouldn't a microscopic black hole evaporate before you could get it to the center of Jupiter. I think we've almost identified a misunderstanding in the public perception of what Hawking radiation is. It's fantastic that a lot of people, especially all of you super nerds, know what Hawking radiation is, that a black hole can evaporate over time as virtual particles pop in and out on either side of the event horizon and the black hole loses mass. But there's a second part to this. Even when a black hole is microscopic, it still has an enormous life time. It has to be very, 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 very tiny before it is evaporating in the blink of an eye. For example, if you do the math, and you can find Hawking radiation calculators online, if we plug in the amount of mass we're using, about 6 times 10 to the 21 kilograms, then you get a lifetime in giga years for this minuscule black hole of 2.7 times 10 to the 30 giga years. Three trillion, trillion, billion, hundred thousand, something like that. It is more than the lifetime of the observable universe right now. Trillions and trillions of years. So this miniature black hole is in no hurry to evaporate. It's not going to evaporate in our lifetimes, and we could probably push it to the center of Jupa Jupa if we thought about it. <laughs> Our next correction comes from Thad Tom, who says, Hey Kyle, love the episode. The only problem I have with using a black hole is, there would be a point, I think, that its own gravitational pull would be greater than that of the sun, which would cause a severe disruption in the orbits of every other planet, thereby causing Earth to become possibly uninhabitable, not to mention the possibility of destroying our entire solar system with a black hole. <sighs> As we just pointed out, just because a 
black hole is very, very tiny doesn't mean it's not very, very massive. However, in our case, our black hole that we're putting at the center of Jupiter, again, because of the 1989 paper and Martin Fogg's suggestion, is still 10,000 times less massive than Earth. So if you added 10,000 times less mass than the Earth is to Jupiter, you're not adding very much mass at all. And so you are not going to be throwing all of the orbits of all the other planets into chaos. You are certainly not going to be creating a gravitational disturbance on the order of the sun. That is not actually something you have to worry about in this case. Dyson Renz has a correction who says, hey Kyle, yeah, but how are you going to put that black hole in Jupiter's core in the first place? Well, that's a very good question. I will say in the paper, this was kind of an open question where there was more suggestions rather than answers. Of course, this would require technology that we simply do not have right now. However, two suggestions that Fogg gave in the paper were uh, gravitational tugs and charged repulsion. So with this miniature black hole, possibly you could put a spaceship or an asteroid or another body near it to act as a gravitational tug that would eventually move the black hole where you wanted it to be. Or or you could charge the surface of a black hole maybe by spraying you know, ionized gas at it, and then you could use electrical repulsion to move the black hole to where you wanted to get it. Those are just suggestions. They may or may not work, and they will require technology that we don't have. So, Dias and Renz, I'm not sure exactly how you move the black hole to Jupiter, but there's a situation in which it's feasible that you might be able to do it if we were super advanced as a spacefaring civilization and we didn't die out within the next, I don't know, 200 years. Awesomeo1324 says, wouldn't the light pollution from Jupiter make it even harder for astronomers to study space from a planet, but also more importantly, mess up the circadian rhythms of a lot of nocturnal animals? Yes, uh, I think it probably would mess with our ecosystem quite a bit, which is why we suggest dismantling Jupa Jup before it gets so bright that it's brighter than the sun, because you do not want to mess with life on Earth as much as possible. Love the show, keep up the great work. This is definite proof of Kyle being a super villain. <sighs> uh, laser bees. Representative. No, I just called. Yes, I'm calling about my laser bee account. Hill, H-I-L-L. -L. No, I just called someone else in the same department. They gave me the same number that led me to a different department, which led me back to you. You didn't just hang up on me, did you? Sorry, I was just switching evil supervillain serve. I was getting a credit card with predatory rates because I love interest. I'm an interesting guy because I'm constantly compounding. Oh. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I gotta give to Lily C who points out what we already pointed out but does it for everyone in the comments. Keep seeing this misconception in the comments, so just gonna comment and hope people see it. Black holes are not inherently massive. If the moon were to become a black hole, the Earth wouldn't just start orbiting it. There would be a very small event horizon black hole floating around Earth until it evaporated. And to Lily C's point, it made me think about this very interesting concept. Because the mass is what's determining the orbits of the planets, how we're staying in orbit, say, around the sun. If the sun instantly became a black hole, not only would we not know about it for about eight minutes, we'd still see the sun in the sky for eight minutes after this happened, we would still go around this newly formed solar mass black hole in exactly the same way. We wouldn't be getting the same light from the sun. It would probably end up killing all life on Earth because everything would freeze, but you'd still be orbiting the center of our solar system in the same way. So it really depends on the mass of the black hole that we're considering, and this one just doesn't happen to be that massive that we're putting at the center of Jupiter. So, for pointing all this out to not only me, but all the commenters, Lily C, you are indeed, oh, a new one, a super nerd. <laughs> and now, getting to this week's episode of Because Science. Ooh, that's cold. This week's episode of Because Science is, should we nuke Mars? That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are taking the musings of a rogue billionaire who just loves anime very seriously and evaluating them scientifically. Should we nuke Mars? What would a nuclear weapon do to the polar caps of Mars? Could we terraform Mars with nuclear weapons? Should we? How much would it cost? How much energy would it take? Oh, we go through all of it. Will Elon see it? I don't know. Send it to him this Thursday morning.
But before we evaluate nuking Mars, please go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet all about turning Jupiter into a black hole star. And leave me all of your best, nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science. Oh, sorry, let me move that. <laughs> Facebook.com slash because science and at because science on Instagram and the Twitter. Oh, and thank you to all these super nerds who came by and said hi when we were at Magic Fest Vegas. Ooh, I was there slinging cards, playing Magic the Gathering with so many of you. I signed so many cards, so many players. Mats. I crushed a group of teenagers and then gave them my foil lands because I felt bad. It was great. So thanks for doing that. I did stomp them though. And don't forget, a hot take is not a substitute for a personality. I'm looking at you, Twitter.